standard 25 is going to help us find the slope of a line or what we call the rate of change. So we're going to look at three different ways to calculate the rate of change. We're going to look at some tables and we're going to talk about the ratio of the dependent variable over the independent variable or the change of y over the change of x. Then I might give you a couple of ordered pairs in which you are going to have to um, calculate the slope or the rate of change. And how you do that is use this formula right here. Ooh, right here. It's very important. You're going to subtract the y's and subtract the x's. And just a reminder, we write our ordered pairs x, comma, y. And then I might give you a graph with a line on it. And you can either pull out the ordered pairs and subtract the y's and the x's, or you can simply count rise over run. And those are the three different ways we're going to calculate slope. Here's a little table if you want to sketch out a little reminder to yourself. I know you talk about this a lot in science. If the line slopes downward, that's a negative slope. Remember, we, we read left to right. If the line slopes up, that's a positive slope. All right, if the line is just dead across horizontally, that's no slope. You can think about that like you're walking, and it's really easy to walk because there's no slope at all. But the undefined slope, the vertical line here, that's undefined. You cannot walk on that. It is undefined. There is no way you can walk on that. So you should probably sketch those four types of slope out in your notebook. Here's our first example. We're going to look at a table. McClure North tennis team is holding a car wash fundraiser. The table below shows the amount of money made from washing cars. And we want to find the rate of change in dollars per car. So how you read this table is if you washed five cars, you'd make 40 bucks. If you washed 10 cars, you'd make $80. If you washed 15 cars, you'd make $120. And what we want to do is we want to find the rate of change in dollars per car. So we want dollars per is divide number of cars. So let's take a look at our table. How do you go from 5 to 10 cars? You would add 5. How do you go from 10 to 15? Add 5. 15 to 20? Add 5. We see a linear relationship. It's the same thing you're adding each time. Now over here, how do you go from 40 to 80? We add 40. 80 to 120, again we add 40. 120 to 160, we add 40. I do not know what's going on with, there we go, add 40. All right, so now we're going to fill in our ratio here. Let's change colors. All right, the money, that's this side, is 40. The number of cars which is this side, is 5. In reducing that fraction, we have $8 per car, per one car. So our rate of change is 8 or $8 per car, or you can leave it 8 over 1, you can say 8. Any of those things would be okay. So for my table, You just look for the change and make a ratio. Now, sometimes I'll give you two points. In the two points, you need to remember your slope formula. Change in y over change in x. We are simply going to subtract the y's on top and subtract the x's on the bottom. So, our y's are 4 and 5, so we're going to write 4 minus 5. Our x's 
are 2 and negative 3. So we're going to write 2 minus negative 3. When we do the math, we'll get negative 1 over 5. So our slope is negative 1 over 5. And you could always check that if you're a visual person. You could check it by plotting the points. So if we went 2, comma, 4, and then we went negative 3, comma, 5, and if you looked at that line there, it has the slope negative 1 over 5, which makes sense when we talk about rise over run. You go down 1 and write 5. So that checks out. Now, if I just gave you a graph, you have to put your own points on it. So here's a graph of a line, and you want to put the points on it. So I'm going to look for a great place to put a point. That's a great place. Now check this out. You can put a point there, but it's not going to help you out. You want to put the points where they cross in the coordinate grid. So here's this. Oop. Here's a point. Here's a point. Here's a point. Any of these points are going to help you out. Now, you want to count rise over run. You count from point to point. So I'm going to rise one, two and run one. So change in the y values over the change in the x values. So this is two and this is one. We'll check it out here. So this is two and that's one. We'll do it again. Rise two, run one. Two over one. So here our slope is two over one or just two. And even if you pick two points that were very far away from each other, you'd still get the slope of two. Check this out. Even if you picked, like, this point and this point, it doesn't matter what point you pick because it will always reduce to 2 over 1. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 6, 1, 2, 3, run 3. So 6 over 3, that still reduces to 2 over 1. So no matter which two points you pick on the line, it's going to work out for you. So if you really like graphing, this is a good strategy for you. Here's three problems I want you to try in the tables. Pause it, try to find the rate of change, and then unpause it to see if you're right. All right. The first one, you need to, okay, we're going to think that this is x and y, and the pattern we found is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And the pattern we found here is plus 16, plus 16, plus 16. The plus is important because if it had been decreasing, you would put minus, okay? So for our slope, remember we're going to go change in y over change in x. Or you could think about just subtracting this, that little uh, triangle. It just means change. And you're going to see that symbol a lot in science class. So here we're going to put our y's on top, which is the plus 16. And then we'll put the x on bottom, which is a plus 2, and that reduces to 8 over 1. And so what does that mean? It's 8 packs per one box. So every box has 8 packs. The tables are pretty real life, so you're probably going to have some units attached to them. For the second one, we're looking for patterns. Here I see plus 1 plus 1, plus 1. On this side, I see plus 6, plus 6, plus 6. So if this is our x, y, we're going to have the 6 on top and the 1 on bottom. You just straight put this on the top and this on the bottom. And that's going to be 6 meters per 1 second. All right, the last one, looking for patterns. Here's plus one, here's plus one, here's plus one. Here we have plus nine, here we have plus nine, here we have plus nine. 
It's a really great thing when you come up with the same number each time. That means it's linear. Now, how do we do it? Okay, if we have our x, y, we put our change in y on top and our change in x on the bottom. So what this means in this problem is that it's $9 per one hour. Now, I do want you to try also a couple from order pairs. So try these two. All right, let's do it. The slope, we put our y's on top, negative 3 minus 3. Then we put our x's on bottom, negative 4 minus 11. And we do the math. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Negative 4 minus 11 is negative 15. That does reduce. Okay, negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that reduces to 6 over 15. But then you have to remember they both divide by 3. So let's do it. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So our final answer is 2 fifths. Woo! We did it. The second one, you're going to put your x's on top, 10 minus negative 2. I'm sorry, I said x's, I meant y's. <laughs> Silly me. And then the x's go on the bottom, 5 minus 5. So we're going to have 12 over 0. Who remembers what happens when 0 is on the bottom? You cannot divide by 0. This is going to give us an undefined slope. And if you were to graph that, you would then see that there's something like this. And if you graph that, you would see a vertical line. That's how you could check to make sure it's undefined. So if you have a hard time remembering which one's undefined and which one's zero, just sketch a graph real quick. And then if it comes into a vertical line, you're like, oh, I cannot walk on that road. Oh, that must be undefined. You know, if it was horizontal, you'd be like, oh, that's an easy one to walk on. That must be zero. No slope. All right. One more. Woohoo! Pause it and try this one. I promise it's the last one. All right. We have our graph. This is really hard for some people finding the points to put on here. So I'm going to put a point here, 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 here. All these are good points. All right, let's do our rise over run. Rise, we're going down one to the right two. Down one to the right two. So if you can remember down is negative, then you'd automatically know it's negative one over two. But if not, then just do rise over run like normal and just be like, okay, it's going down the hill. My answer has to be negative. So you could write it like that. You could write it one over negative two or you could write it just plain negative 1 over 2. All of those are exactly the same thing. I would take any of those answers. All right, great job, everyone. Come to class with questions. See you later.